going on YouTube? DG Whips are back in with another video. Now, I'm gonna try not to get blinded by the sun here because I'm literally staring right at it, but today I'm gonna be talking about pretty much everything I'm gonna be doing exactly to the turbo G35, the rear mount turbo G35 to be specific. Uh, I'm gonna be showing you all my plans and everything, and I have mostly all the parts, like 98% of everything what I need. I just need like a fitting here and there and stuff like that, little stuff, but I pretty much have everything I need to go. I haven't started yet just because I want everything before I start. I don't want to start and then I have to like wait for something. Uh, it's just annoying. So, so I'll show you some of the parts I have. I pretty much have everything, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to cut this rear bumper a little bit, maybe like right up here. That way you'll be actually able to see the turbo if you're behind the car. Uh, I think that'd be pretty cool. I mean, I could go with the stealth look to where you don't see it at all but you gotta be a hot boy a little bit. Especially if you're doing rear mount, you're gonna want people to know. I don't know, if you pull up to a car, I mean, people see the turbo in the back, that's very unique. Not a lot of people do that, so definitely something that I'm probably gonna do is cut the bumper a little bit. I'm probably not gonna cut it like fully halfway, but just a little bit. Uh, I do want it to look straight and clean, even though this bumper could use some body work. I did get hit right here in a parking lot. Um, it's not a big deal, I can get that touched up, but. Right here, I have my gauges and gauge pod. This is actually just a universal pod. Uh, the one that would clip straight into my A-pillar was like 100 bucks. This was 20 bucks and I saved the $80. So not a big deal. You could just paint this and then uh, actually use a heat gun to make this uh, fit your A-pillar. And then you just screw it in and it will fit the gauges just the same. So looks just as good. I have, this is my boost gauge, and then I have the wideband air fuel ratio gauge. Whoops. And there, right here is my oil scavenge pump. I showed you that in the last video, oil pan spacer. Right here, I have a whole bunch of uh, braided steel line. This is like 20 feet of like 10 AN line. I also have some 4 AN as well. And I have some fittings. Right here is my oil cooler. There's the actual oil cooler and then the lines that come with it. These are 10 AN as well. And this pretty much bolts right up. I just need to mount it using the, I just need to get some brackets and then mount it. I probably just mount it to the bath bar or something. No big deal. And here is the sandwich plate uh, that you do. You can actually hook up AN fittings as well as a uh, oil temperature and pressure sensor to that. So that pretty much makes everything plug and play there. I haven't opened it yet, but I have some Z1 rear diff bushings. Now, if we're gonna be pushing pretty decent power, um, I'm gonna want the suspension to feel really solid, and my diff is just giving me really bad wheel hop, and I can feel the drivetrain lag because the bushing is just moving around so much, so I'm definitely gonna be doing those. Now, I am probably gonna have to route intercooler piping through up here where the speaker is, which means I'm probably gonna have to either move the speaker or move it to my other daily, the Subi. Uh, which I'm probably gonna do because because I'm gonna want that in my daily. I think that'll be that'll make more sense. But I'm gonna run stock fans and stock radiator for now. Uh, honestly, this cools great. It keeps at a really good temperature. And if I have problems when boosting and it starts overheating, then I'll upgrade radiator and fans. But I think I'll be okay for now. I do have the Mishimoto thermostat. It's not really doing much, but it does open a lot cooler. Might even run uh, just straight uh, distilled water just to help a little bit with temperatures, but I'm gonna be running like an extra two quarts of oil with the oil cooler as well as my oil pan spacer. So I'm gonna have a lot more oil capacity, which means it will actually cool better. And I'll have a external oil cooler. So I'm gonna be having pretty much no problems of cooling the car as long as everything is working. So I'm not really too concerned about that. It is Las Vegas and it is summer, so it's gonna get like 110 degrees some days, but I think we'll be good. I, I can't imagine us having problems with oil temperature with that much extra oil and an oil cooler. That would just be goofy. So this is a cheap knockoff HKS blow off valve. Uh, honestly, pretty much no one has problems with the blow off valves or at least the knockoff ones. They work fine. Uh, they're very simple. And they honestly sound pretty much the exact same anyway. Uh, it's in there. I don't really feel like taking it out. I have one hand, but this goes on right here. And this is a 2.5. The size is 2.5, so just get some couplers and everything, slam it on somewhere after the intercooler and before the math, and you're good to go. A little coupler here, and then I have some more in there. I ordered a few more just to make sure I have some. I could just try to use the cheap couplers first, but honestly, a lot of people just have problems with boost leaks when they first boost their car. 
I don't really want to deal with that too much. So I'm just going to get quality couplers and clamps. Hopefully, I shouldn't have any major issues with boost leaks. Mishimoto is really good quality coupler um, and it's able to handle a lot of pressure so these should be good. So some of you might be wondering why I didn't just go a uh, traditional engine. I didn't just mount the turbo on the engine somewhere or even just get the Rev9 kit. Um, which it would have cost roughly the same, but however, the Rev9 kit, the problem with that is a lot of the stuff you can't use. You can't really use the, uh, the V-band clamps. And also there's just really bad quality control with some of the exhaust parts and it's really difficult. You also might not be able to have your AC. Um, I really want my AC. That's kind of important. I live in Las Vegas It's 110 degrees in the summer which it's about to be summer right now so not having ac is just a no-go for me personally maybe if you live in like cali or something it's whatever but in vegas you if you don't have ac and you're driving around you're just you're done also i can just fully control the quality of each part that i want so some parts you really don't need to go super high budget on you don't need to get a mishimoto intercooler I, any intercooler will really work as long as um the tubing and stuff like that maybe don't go cheap on the couplers which is what i did I, i'm pretty much going mishimoto for everything also i actually think it'd be overall cheaper to do it this way i do need to get like a couple more parts and longer lines and stuff but also also i wanted to keep my motor line art pipes and with the rev 9 kit i would not have been able to keep them i would have been pretty much from the headers i go into a single there and you can't use your art pipes that way and I want the car to sound really good still. I am gonna run a resonator still when I go do my exhaust. I'll probably do a three inch setup instead of the 2.25 uh, True Dual that I have right now. Um, because if I kept True Dual, then I have to go twin and twin is just a lot more expensive, a lot more parts, a lot more things to worry about. So I didn't wanna do that. Single turbo is just fine for me, especially because my first turbo build and I'm not going crazy power anyway. I'm talking seven PSI maybe. What I did not keep out on though was a precision turbo wastegate. I actually got this used off Amazon for like 200 bucks, um, which is a good deal. Got the 38 millimeter one. Um, that should be here by Friday. Today's Wednesday. You probably will see this video like Thursday or something, but the wastegate can make it break your turbo build because if the wastegate sticks closed or anything like that, then uh, you're kind of toast and your engine blows up because you over boosted. So, I didn't want to, I actually did get a cheaper wastegate, but I started having like anxiety about it and I didn't want that to be the thing that like ruined everything. So I said, screw it, I'll pay the extra money. I'm trying to stay on our budget, but I'd rather it work and then save the extra hundred dollars or whatever. So, but yeah, overall, this is actually going to cost me about like parts wise, like two grand, maybe like 2,100. I started to do the exact total, which isn't terrible for a turbo build. And if you do all the work yourself, that's a great deal. For boost you can do this yourself pretty cheap if you know what you're doing you just need to know all the parts you need know when you can cheap out and know when not to cheap out on with the fabrication of the exhaust it's probably going to cost like three or four hundred bucks and then i'm going to also need the tune that's going to be between four six hundred bucks we'll see so maybe like three grand total and that number is going to obviously vary depending on what you prefer in your build what tuning you go through if you make your own exhaust and not etc etc but yeah next video i upload about this i should actually be going ham and installing parts on this car i think we're going to try to do those, those rear diff bushings first those are pain in the ass but i can't wait to get started and the fact that i haven't started yet is amazing uh i'm very antsy i keep looking at it i'm like man i want to boost this thing so thank you guys for following and watching and liking the video and subscribing and commenting i appreciate each and every one of you guys we're almost at 1500 subscribers guys that's crazy thanks again so much for watching I will see you guys next time.